This is what you want to see when you're trying to select a really good steak. USDA Prime is the highest grade given by the USDA. The higher the ratio of marbling and the younger the beef, the higher the grade. Uh, and it's this kind of fat marbling that determines the tenderness, juiciness, and the flavor. Now these are textbook examples of what this kind of marbling would look like that I had taken from Google Images just to give you an idea of what you'd be looking for. And here are the ones that I found at the grocery store. Now you won't find these everywhere, like you won't likely find them at your local neighborhood Walmart grocery store. Not in this type of quality. These are about two inches thick upwards around there and they cost in today's prices nearly forty dollars for meat so when you cook you know really excellent stuff like this you don't want to ruin it which is easy to do on steaks you can overcook it if you like yours like medium rare and it comes out like tan in the middle you're not going to be happy with it especially spending all that so there's a way to cook these perfectly every time and it's not a secret you know, but it's something that people hear of and they get intimidated by it. Maybe they think that, you know, it's going to be too hard or difficult, but really it's easy. And the way to cook it is called the reverse sear. It comes out perfect every time. I usually take and wrap these up in paper towels for a couple hours before I prepare them just to get some of the moisture out of them. Then I brush on some olive oil front, back, and on the sides. And of course, these have been trimmed of any of the excess fat around the edges, leaving just a small little layer. I like this stuff. You can use just salt and pepper, but these Grill Mates Montreal Steak Seasoning is excellent. It's got garlic and salt, pepper, different things in there that really comes out good on a steak. So I just put that pretty liberally on there, front, back, and sides. Just spread that love around. And I put on a fair bit of Mediterranean sea salt, and I love this salt. Then I allow this cover to sit for a couple of hours to get everything down to room temperature. That's the best way to cook it. Now for the reverse sear, you want to take any kind of baking tray like this that the steaks will fit on, and you want to cover the bottom of it in some tin foil. Just you know, that makes for easier cleanup in case it drips, but usually it doesn't. And then you follow this up with a, like a cooking grate. This could be like a uh, baking cooling rack or whatever, just so that it's up off of the flat surface. You want it to bake evenly on the front and back. After the steaks have gotten to room temperature, just preset your oven to 275 degrees. Then transfer those beautiful steaks onto that grilling rack. Like I said, this is going to go into the oven. And you're going to need one specialty tool. And this is it. It's the digital meat thermometer that you can program. Now for medium rare, which is how I like it, you want to get the internal temperature to exactly 130 degrees. So you can put the meat thermometer in there, set the alarm, just like I've done right here. And you can actually monitor it while the meat's in the oven. Uh, this is a magnetic backed device, so I can stick it on the outside of the oven. And I can go do something for about, usually around 50 minutes, an hour, while the internal temperature comes up. So I'm going to take a risk here, and I've got everything set up to where I can hold the camera and try to one-hand this into the oven and I managed not to dump it out onto the floor. That makes me happy. It goes kind of on the middle-ish rack. You know, I think I'm maybe one step a little bit higher in this picture, but you know, it seems to work either way. And so like I said, this cord is kind of heat resistant, so you can just kind of close this door on it and take and place it on top of your stove somewhere. Make sure that your alarm is on and go do something. When you're done doing something and the alarm goes off, your steak should look something like this. The internal temperature reached probably less than 130 degrees because I like it maybe a little bit less than medium rare. And so I set this for 10 minutes to let them rest in tribute to Anthony Bourdain whose number one tip on steaks was after you do this, don't poke it, don't stick it, just let it rest. And just look at that marbling all plumped up ready to burst forth with juice and steak goodness. Now what I do while I'm letting this rest is I get my searing set up ready which is just this hot plate, induction cooktop, cast iron plate, and some butter. 
And I do this outside because of the high heat. It's going to be on the highest heat that I got on here. can make for sometimes a smoky or spattery experience, but if you want that outside with that nice brown crust on it, this is what you're going to have to do. So I just make it easy for cleanup. All right, that's pretty good and hot. doesn't take long. Now what you want to do is you want to sear all sides. You know, of course, the front and back, but you want to turn them on their sides and get those two till you get this nice kind of crust on the outside, this brown color. And this is what they look like when they're complete. And they look fantastic. You don't get a lot of drip with these. All, all the juice or most of the juice is still trapped on the inside. Uh, here's what it looks like all plated up. Looks beautiful with some brown rice on there and some broccoli. So what I want to do is I want to cut this open right down the middle so we can show you what a perfect reverse sear will do for a steak. This is a little bit less than medium rare and I feel comfortable doing this on live TV. Look at that! Is that beautiful or what? It's juicy plump on the inside. I will tell you it was a tender and delicious steak. I seasoned it just perfectly. Maybe add a little more salt. Bon Appetit. Try it, you'll like it. So, if you like the video, hit the thumbs up and subscribe and ring the bell to get future notifications. Thank you so much. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.